Well, we did it. We performed Fandom Hearts 2 in some capacity. Here's how it happened. So, back in 2016, we were getting ready to perform it for Con Bravo. Uh, the script had already been through uh, one or two rewrites at the time, and Con Bravo saw where we were at, at in about June and was like, it's not up to the same level of comedy or quality that your previous shows had, therefore we don't want it to come to Con Bravo. So we were like, okay, we still did a Kickstarter, so we still have money to perform it at somewhere like Buddies and Bad Times Theater which was kind of pricey at the time, but it was the best option we had found at the time. So we were like, well, let's just try and do that. But as rehearsals kept going on, uh, more and more people kept leaving the show until the point where we're like, we can't, we'll have to completely recast so many roles, like important roles that it, it doesn't make sense to keep going. So that was when I made that video was like, Phantom Hearts 2 is canceled because that was what happened at the time. There was just no way to, like, move forward from then. Since then, I think it has been on everyone's minds that they wanted to perform it still, somehow. And back then, we even talked about doing, like, a concert of some kind, of just the music. Or, like, a staged version where we have our scripts, but we don't actually do any of the actions, have props or costumes or whatever. Um, and... Over the course of the past seven years, since 2016, it, it, it really stuck with me when Con Bravo said it wasn't up to the same level of comedy. So I, we did our five-year anniversary, where we rewatched Fandom Hearts 1, and I saw the way the jokes worked and how they were structured. It was like cutscene dialogue followed by like two or three jokes about that piece of dialogue, and that was kind of how the first show was, and I think that's why there were so many laughs every kind of second or two and so i went back and i was like what can i use from the existing script that torah and i wrote together and what could just be completely redone from scratch so the original script had all of roxas and axel's relationship at the start of it but it starts on such a sad sort of like depressing note honestly is roxas's story so i was like okay no Roxas at the beginning. We're just going to start with Sora, Donald, and Goofy awaking from the sleeping pods. Because that's the characters we want to see. And then there will be Roxas interspersed between it. Because so he's in Sora's head, basically. And Sora keeps having these flashback memories, etc. As the organization keeps bringing up Roxas to him. Um, another thing I was like, we need to... We need to streamline the exposition a bit and so i introduced a narrator a literal narrator very much like into the woods where the characters can see the narrator and the narrator will just be like okay listen this guy this guy they do some shit <laughs> and i think that really solidified what the comedy of the show was going to be for Phantom Hearts 2 specifically is listen the story's confusing this narrator's going to move it along and we're going to sort of get snippets of Roxas throughout the show. And I think that was what worked. So I so I was in the process of rewriting the script. Um, I picked out the songs that I think were the strongest or songs that were funny. Because some of them were very serious before. Like Roxas had this very sad reprise of what's real anymore but it's am i real anymore and it's just it's such a sad song for the start of a comedy musical um so i picked only the strongest songs i picked a villain song our goal and i was sped it up a little bit during rehearsals as well and then i made it funny and the funny of that of those villains of Xemnas and Zigbar is that they're not on the same page about what they want to do as a villain. <laughs> Xemnas is like, we want to make Kingdom Hearts whole. And Zigbar's like, right, and then we kill Sora. And they're like, no, we need Sora. And they're like, what are we doing here exactly? And and I like adapted that into the lyrics of the existing song where they're singing about what they want to do, but now one of them isn't sure about what they're trying to do. Um, and that made it funnier. I also went to a furry friend of mine named Anubis, 
Uh, and he is such a talented metal musician. He composes and writes and performs all of his own music. And I heard him at Fernal Equinox and I'm like, you are so good. We got to work together on a song at some point. And I, so I was, I was like, hey, like, can you do Kick Some Ass Tonight? It already is this kind of rock like ballad but can you do it as like metal like throwing guitars drums fills everything i don't care and he's like i don't know how it's gonna sound and he delivered me the first demo and i'm like yes 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 and as much more as you can put in there and he's like oh okay so he did that and kicks him ass tonight sounds amazing and then i was i really wanted the last song to be as strong as that so i asked if he could do finally home as well which I think is the strongest song of FH2. And yeah, he delivered it and it turned out amazing. And we were sharing back and forth like, oh, the end of this, uh, the killer song, uh, why do I keep counting? And then he sent me a clip of Dream Theater's The Astonishing and I'm like, yes, yes, all this strong music, put it all in. Uh, and it sounds amazing uh, as you'll be able to hear in the final show. So all of that was coming together brought up that I was rewriting the show for my own personal like amusement just to see if I can write a, the version that I would have liked to have seen and I'm like I don't know how but it would be nice to perform it and everyone was like yes 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 let's do it let's do it let's do it and I'm like okay then I guess I'll figure this out and so for the past year um, I had been trying to do improv shows and I had found this place called SoCap Comedy in Toronto it's a it's a really nice theater. It's a small stage and there's limited backstage area in it, but it had uh, lighting. It had sound wired up already into it. Uh, they had microphones that we can use. The There was a tech person present included with the rental who is like always willing to do cool lighting and, and, and sound effects and stuff. And it was, and it was really cheap. It was really cheap to rent out SoCap for the entire night. And I'm like, let's do FH1 at eight o'clock, and then at 10 o'clock we'll do FH2. We only had the space until 11, uh, so I needed to go in and shorten Phantom Hearts 2 to only be about an hour, because we wanted to do Phantom Hearts 1 in its entirety, but not necessarily all of 2 needed to be done. Um, so it meant cutting about 30 minutes worth of jokes and also extra songs. But the version that we came up with is just the, the best version we could have done for that night. And so that's what we ended up doing. I said, who wants to be involved? We'll only do one rehearsal. And then everybody else was like, can we do more than one rehearsal? Because everybody else wanted to do the best possible version, not just like something that was hastily thrown together. So in about two or three extra rehearsals, we went over the script, we went over all the songs and the chorus vocal parts. Um, and then it came together and after I posted the video that we were going to do this for one night only, all the comments were like, I'm not in Toronto, but I'd love to see it. And so the most recent time I went to SoCap for an improv show, I ran a speed test on my phone because there was no Wi-Fi there, but I wanted to see if it was possible to stream. And I got pretty decent, um, like bit rates on my phone. So I was like, we could live stream this if I tether the streaming software to my phone, then I can use the that internet connection. And so the live stream happened. And I was really amazed as we started that there were 30 people waiting for the show to start. That meant a lot. There was a bunch of people in the room and there, we had two super fans who came from Peterborough, which is a very far away from Toronto. So they made the trek all the way in. Um, and there were people watching on the live stream and I was like, oh, we're really like doing this right now. <laughs> and so with only about 45 minutes of setup time, we didn't have time to check mics or do a run through or a cue to cue or anything. We just did the show and it, it, it was kind of messy. It was kind of chaotic. And at some point we all just collectively decided who cares? And we just had such a good time. It kind of turned into a play that goes wrong type of thing where we were throwing props across the stage. We we're like, this isn't going to work. Somebody hold this. You in the front row. Can you be the nobodies? Uh, and then, you know, people messed up their lines and we're like, who cares? It was a good time. We all had a good time. Um, 
But one of the things that's that people remember from the first show is that we changed the line Kingdom Hearts' is light to something else because we thought it was cheesy and I like the idea of just stopping the show at the most dramatic part and doing some improv with the audience. So we had the audience write down Kingdom Hearts' is blank. So, of course, we did it for this show and I have the all the lines we didn't use. So if you've watched the live stream version, you know that it was Kingdom Hearts is gay. And that's the suggestion that I wrote because before the show started, I saw that there wasn't a whole lot of suggestions. So a lot of us were just writing things down and throwing it in the hat. And in the show, you see Leanne pull all the, the suggestions, pick one at random and give it to me. And that is not staged in any way. Leanne had no idea what was on that. I had no idea what was on that. Whatever was on it was what we were going to use. And you see my look of fear of like, I don't know what's on here. <laughs> and then I read it and it turns out to be mine. But I think with all the gay jokes um, between Sora and Riku throughout Fandom Hearts 1, there's the good uh, punchline of, of their gay relationship at the end of Fandom Hearts 2 that I wrote in. Um, but for having it throughout Phantom Hearts 1, it feels like a good place to be like, Kingdom Hearts is gay. This is a very gay game. It's very homoerotic. Uh, anyways, so I'm going to read to you the ones that didn't happen. Kingdom Hearts is Brian David Gilbert's nightmare. Uh, Kingdom Hearts is the new hip fun toy for kids. <laughs> Kingdom Hearts is actually easy if you pay attention. <laughs> I liked that one. Kingdom Hearts is side B. Kingdom Hearts is life. Kingdom Hearts is Elon Musk. I would have not used this. I would have been like, nope, we're picking another one. Uh, and then finally, uh, Kingdom Hearts is cheesecake, which I feel like is in the same vein as Kingdom Hearts is meatloaf. But yeah, uh, Kingdom Hearts is gay, I think was the best one. Uh, if we had ended up with like side B for cheesecake, I would have loved those. But yeah, shit, it's been 10 years, and all of us were in a rehearsal room, and we're like, it feels like yesterday. It feels like we were all just here, like, last week. The three years or so of COVID felt like an eternity, but once we got back into a rehearsal room, it felt like no time had passed. Like, we had all, a lot of us had moved on, like, starting families, starting new jobs, um, you know, continuing to do acting and improv and such. But it really did, like, we all kind of fell back into, like, we're just messing around and having fun. So people have said, are you going to make a Phantom Hearts 3? No. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I had always thought about it. After we had finished writing FH2, before F Kingdom Hearts 3 had actually come out, I was like, if we finish this before Kingdom Hearts 3 comes out, we should make our own Phantom Hearts 3 based on these characters. Because we had an inkling what fan what Kingdom Hearts 3 was going to be, you know. Trying to rescue all the other characters from Birth by Sleep and and save all of the organization members. Whatever. We could, we could make up that plot uh, and whatever the through line of the story would be. There's a joke in Phantom Hearts 2 that I wrote in where Sora's like, God, I'm so tired and exhausted. Like, I just, I can't believe I'm going to have to do this forever. And then... And then he gets a new piece of dialogue from Square Enix that's like, No, no, you love doing this and this is all you want to do. Because I played Kingdom Hearts 3 and I'm like, Oh, Sora just wants to do this. He's not tired. He doesn't want to go back home. He was home. Everyone was home at the end of Kingdom Hearts 2. Why keep doing stuff? You wanted to get home. But no, apparently he wants to do this Keyblade thing. Forever. <laughs> And I was like, that should be the plot of Kingdom Hearts, of Phantom Hearts 3, is that Sora just doesn't want to keep doing this, and he keeps trying to start his own life, um, but the the adventure keeps calling to him, and all his friends keep calling to him. Uh, that would have been a fun idea for Phantom Hearts 3, and who knows, maybe at some point we'll write that. I cannot promise anything. Uh, a lot of people, like, I, I made the joke during the live stream, I'm like, next year, Star Explorers! And everyone went, no! It would be fun to rewrite Star Explorers because I think, you know, coming up on 10 years of that show and rewatching it during the marathon, we all have, you know, some inkling of like what would what we would do different with that story and and maybe a few of those songs and those characters like obviously there's a lot better stuff we could have done in how we portrayed Wilma and and that whole storyline 
but and it would be nice to revisit that and do it a little bit more appropriately but I, I don't I don't know I I think Christian also said you know he liked the idea of revisiting Frostbite but if we ever do continue to end up do stuff it probably won't be as fandom as fandom musicals um, if you are still looking for stuff that has us in it though like for example um, I took my comic the costume shop and made a live action stage show off of it it's got me it's got Jay it's got Chantel it's got Connie. Uh, it's got Christian, you know, a lot. It's got Torah. All of, almost all of us are in that. But it's not a fan of musical show. You can check that out online. So yeah, a lot of us are just doing theater stuff still. So it's all in our mind. We just don't do it as fan to musicals. But I think every once in a while, doing something like this reunion show, it's been fun to revisit. I don't know if it's something we want to continue to do for the future then. But I'm so glad we did do it. And, you know, it, it kind of makes me want to take Phantom Hearts or Phantom Hearts 2 to, like, a fringe. But I don't know how well received it would be there. People have continued to find Phantom Hearts since we did it, which has been really wonderful. There were people who came and were like, we saw it after you guys ended the group. And we get comments all the time. I still check the YouTube and the emails. And honestly, I think if the opportunity came up to do it at a convention or do like a concert again, or if people even care and want to see more, then hell yeah, I think we'll try to do that. But for the time being, there's other avenues, you know, as Sora says, you know, miles of expanse to cross. Let's get started. So let's not hang around here. But I'm glad we did it. I'm very glad we did it. It was very tiring and exhausting, though. <laughs> but I think that's just theater in general. I'm about to get poignant for a second. I think theater is a lot of rehearsals and a lot of stressful times. And, you know, do, will the show work? Will people like it? Will people come to see it? And then, you know, we have 30, 40 people in the live stream and, and you know, 20 to 30 people show up in person. So... In the end, it always feels like it's it's so worth it. It's just the, the middle bit where you have to plan days and rehearsals and such. But yeah, I'm glad I did it. And I'm glad that all of you watched it. And I'm glad you keep coming and finding it. Share it around. I don't know how to get this in front of more people. If there's a way to do it, I do not know what it is. Except just, like, we've tried to post in forums and send it to, like, Kingdom Hearts fan sites... They never posted it or shared it. They never helped promote it or share it around. And every time we're like, Kingdom Hearts musical, people are like, ugh. Our only point of comparison is Star Kid. And it seemed like they picked Harry Potter, which at the time people were like, anything new Harry Potter? Hell yes, a musical? On board! And then we go, Kingdom Hearts musical, and people went, oh, no, no. And I don't get why. When we did the original Indiegogo, people were like, I hope they get sued. And I'm like, why would you hope that? If you like a thing, why wouldn't you want to see more of it <laughs> in a different form from people who love it? What the hell? So I don't know the way to get it in front of people. I think it takes a couple influencers to just be like, hey, you guys should check this out. It's actually pretty good. So if you're one of those people, please, please do that. It would mean the world to let people see this more. Because everyone keeps finding it and then being like, I'm so glad I found this small thing. And it's like, can you keep sharing that so other people can see it? Uh, this is getting long now. Thanks. See you on the next one. Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe not.